everyone and welcome to the Time to Cook Club Advanced and to your online class. So today we're going to be making salted dark chocolate and caramel tart. So the first thing you need to do is you need to pop your 15 biscuits into a Ziploc freezer bag. So you can either use um, a biscuit like a hobnob or digestive or you might want to use a chocolate chip cookie. Okay, but you need 15 of them about that size. So if your cookies are a little bit smaller than that, then you might want to add in a couple of extra. Okay, great work. Now you need to um, kind of get the air out of the bag before zipping it up. Make sure that it is done up tight, okay? Because otherwise, when you start to crush the biscuits, the crumbs will go everywhere. So now you need a rolling pin and you're basically just going to bash the biscuits so that they start to form um, kind of fine bread crumbs. So we're just going to bash them and we can turn them over and do the same on the other side. You might want to use your rolling pin to kind of roll over the biscuits to help crush them as well, okay? So join me back here in just a minute when you have crushed your biscuits down to crumbs. Okay, welcome back guys. So hopefully by now you have crushed your biscuits down into crumbs. So now it's time to open up that freezer bag carefully before pouring in our desiccated coconut. Okay, like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to seal our bag up again and we're just going to give that a good shake just to mix the coconut together with the biscuit crumbs. Okay, great work guys, well done. So we're going to pour the biscuits crumbs and the desiccated coconuts into a mixing bowl. If you spot any big kind of lumps of biscuit at this point, you can use your rolling pin just to kind of bash it down. Okay. okay, so once your biscuits have been crushed into crumbs, you've mixed them with the desiccated coconut and you've popped them into a mixing bowl. We're now going to melt the margarine or the butter in a saucepan, okay? You're going to pop your saucepan onto a low heat on the hob um, and you're going to melt the butter or the margarine. You need to be with your saucepan at all times, okay, to make sure that the butter or the margarine doesn't burn, okay? So we're literally just aiming for it to be melted so that we can mix it in with our dry ingredients. So I'll see you back here in just a minute once you have melted your butter or your margarine in. Welcome back guys. So hopefully by now your butter or your margarine has melted, okay? And we're now going to pour that carefully into our biscuit um, mixture, okay? And using our spoon, we're just going to stir that um, butter or margarine into the dry ingredients. That's going to act a bit like kind of glue, I guess to bind some of them together to make our biscuit crumb base for our tart. So now what we need to do is we need to grease the base and the sides of a 20 centimetre or eight inch round cake tin with a removable bottom if possible. So I've just popped some um, margarine onto a little piece of non-stick baking paper and I'm just um, coating the um, tin in margarine, okay? the sides and the base. And this is going to help um, to stop the biscuit base from sticking to the tin, okay? Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pour that biscuit crumb mixture into our tin, okay, like so. And using our hands, okay, we're just going to press down on that biscuit mixture, okay? Um, we're going to press down and forwards because what we're aiming for is to create kind of a biscuit crust, okay? Around the sides, okay? So we're aiming to kind of line the bottom, okay? But also to create a crust for our tart. Great work, guys, well done. So just keep patting down on your biscuit um, mixture until it's nice and secure and you've got the biscuit mixture kind of coming up the sides as well. You will need to just make sure that you haven't got any holes in the bottom, okay? And um, that's really important because otherwise the caramel will just sink all the way to the bottom of the tin, okay? So that's what mine looks like. Hopefully yours looks similar. 
So now what you need to do is after you've washed your hands, you need to pop your cake tin into the fridge to chill for 30 minutes, okay? So join me back here in 30 minutes and I'll tell you what to Welcome do back, guys. So hopefully by now you have chilled your biscuit base in the fridge for 30 minutes. So now it's time for you to pop your salted caramel sauce onto your biscuit base, okay? So we're just gonna spoon it out of the jar, like so. Kind of dollop it in. And just keep going until you have spooned out all of that lovely caramel sauce, okay? Remember to check the lid as well because mine's got quite a bit of sauce on the lid. And then using another spoon, you can just kind of scrape off that lovely caramel sauce off of the um, spoon so you're not wasting any and then with the back of the spoon you're just going to um, just smooth it out all over the bottom of your biscuit base okay like so okay and then when you've done that you can pop your biscuit base back into the fridge to chill while we make our lovely chocolate ganache okay so now you need to chop your butter into cubes Okay, like so, before carefully popping them onto a dish, okay, so that we can use it later. So now we're going to break our chocolate into small pieces, okay, I find it's always easier to do this when it's still kind of sealed in the packet, and then I open the packet up carefully, and pour it into a microwavable bowl. Um, if you don't have a microwave, that's fine. What you'll need to do is you'll need to pop your chocolate um, into a Pyrex um, bowl, and then you'll need to um, have a saucepan with a small amount of water in it, okay? Um, you can then pop your bowl on top of your saucepan. You want it to be a really snug fit, so you want to use quite a large bowl, I guess, and quite a small saucepan so that the bowl just perches on top. And then you can pop the saucepan onto the hob um, on the low heat and you can heat the water in the pan and then that in turn will help to um, melt the chocolate. But basically you don't want the water to touch the chocolate, okay? So however you're going to do it, you need to heat up your um, chocolate until it begins to melt, okay? You will need to keep checking it. So I'm going to pop my chocolate into the microwave on high to heat for one minute before giving it a stir. And then I'll probably heat it on 30 second intervals. But you don't want your chocolate to burn, so you need to check it regularly. You're only aiming for the chocolate to have started to melt, okay? Because we're going to add in some um, hot cream um, to continue to melt the chocolate. Okay, so I'll see you back here in just a minute when your chocolate has started to melt. Welcome back guys. So hopefully by now your chocolate has started to melt. What you need to do um, next is you need to measure out 225 millilitres of cream, okay? And you're going to pop that into a saucepan. You're going to heat the cream until bubbles start to appear and then take the cream off the heat. Um, you don't want to burn the cream, okay? So just take it off as soon as you start to see bubbles appear. Okay, welcome back guys. So hopefully by now you have heated your cream in a saucepan until it um, has started to form bubbles, okay? Um, so now what you need to do is you need to pour your chocolate into a mixing bowl if your bowl that you heated it in um, isn't very big, like mine isn't too big, so it won't fit many of the other ingredients in, okay? So just try and get out all of that lovely chocolate and pop that into a clean mixing bowl. You're then going to pour over the warm cream, okay, like so. And you're just going to leave it for about a minute, okay, before starting to whisk the cream together with the chocolate. Okay, so with your whisk, you need to just whisk in gently that um, the chocolate and the cream. Okay, and take your time with this, it will take a little while, you're aiming for a lovely glossy ganache, okay, so it will definitely be well worth the wait. So once you've whisked together your cream and your chocolate, you're then going to add in the butter a little bit at a time, and you're going to whisk the butter until it completely melts into the chocolate mixture. 
Now take your time with this, okay? It will be worth the wait. And just continue to whisk the butter in bit by bit into the chocolate mixture, okay? And then I'll tell you what to do next. So once all of your um, butter has been whisked into the chocolate mixture, you're also going to add in your one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, like so, before whisking it again, just to make sure that that um, vanilla extract is all mixed in. And the smell smells amazing. Great work guys, well done. So now in a clean mixing bowl, you need to pour the rest of your cream, the 75 millilitres of cream, and you're going to use an electric whisk to whisk up the cream until you get nice soft peaks, okay? You're not aiming for stiff peaks like a meringue, just soft peaks. So join me back here when you've whisked up your cream and we can finish off our tart together. Okay, so welcome back guys. So hopefully by now you have whisked up your cream into nice soft peaks. So now what you need to do is you need to remove your whisk and you're just going to fold in the cream into the um, chocolate mixture. So when we fold, um, what we do, we don't stir, okay? We make a letter S and then do a strike down, okay? And we're just going to fold in the cream until there are no white streaks in our mixture, okay? I'm just gonna fold in the cream and I'm just doing my cream a little bit at a time, okay, until I've added it all. But like I say, you don't want to see any white streaks in the mixture at all. So just keep going, folding in your cream until your cream's all folded together and we can um, do the finishing touches together. Once you've folded in the rest of that cream, you're now going to take your tart out of the oven and you're going to pour the chocolate mixture all on top of the tart, okay, like so. Okay, if you've got a um, spatula, you might want to use it just to make sure that you have um, got all of that lovely chocolatey mixture out, like so. Okay, and you can use the back of your spoon if you need to, to just smooth over the chocolate ganache, just to make sure that it's a nice level surface. And then what you're going to do is you're going to carefully pop your tart back into the fridge for 30 minutes to chill. You don't want to leave it in your fridge for longer than 30 minutes, otherwise you'll lose that lovely shine of the ganache, okay? So join me back here in 30 minutes and we can look at our tarts together. Hello everyone and welcome back. So hopefully by now, your um, chocolate tart has been cooling and chilling in the fridge for 30 minutes. So all I did then um, was to pop a baked bean can or something similar underneath my cake tin and just pull down on the sides to reveal the crust of the tart. Um, and then you just need to um, let the tart rest until you're ready to eat it. So don't put it back in the fridge, otherwise you'll lose that lovely glossy shine of the ganache, um, but you need to pop it somewhere cool. And then when you slice it, you can just sprinkle over a little bit of sea salt um, over the top. So I hope you enjoyed making your salted dark chocolate and caramel tart, but more importantly, I hope you enjoy eating it and sharing it with your family. Thank you so much for cooking along with me today. And I really look forward to cooking with you again next week when we'll be back with another delicious bake from our Spring Bakes menu. Thanks so much. Bye.